Hello, welcome to the Bible study tonight, and I'm so glad that you could join me, and uh, we're in John chapter 17 tonight, and uh, John chapter 17 is Jesus' last prayer before being taken captive by the Pharisees and Sadducees and taken to the high priest to be condemned to death and uh, death on the cross, and of course he'll have to go see Pilate and We'll get into all that starting tomorrow, but today his prayer is uh, is amazing, and uh, Jesus prayed this prayer, and uh, I'm praying that you will go through and read it, meditate on it. I'm going to read it. I'm not going to par paraphrase this because it's powerful. The words of Christ are powerful, and I pray that you go through and you'll read it. And you will enjoy the power of what the Lord wants for us. He wants this for us. And, and so why, why don't we try to apprehend what he wants for us instead of just doing things our own way, huh? <laughs> and so it's amazing, though. I've been, uh, I, I've been doing uh, daily devotionals with Ann Graham Lotz, which is Billy Graham's daughter, and also with uh, Henry Blackaby, who wrote the Experience in God Bible study. I've been doing them for a couple of years now, but they are both going through these chapters or this period in Christ's life in this book of John or in one of the other Gospels because we're coming up on Easter uh, in the daily devotional. So it ties in so well with what I've been reading. And I love when the scriptures tie together and... Uh, and the Lord has a way of doing that in my life. This, uh, of course, when you're reading through the gospel and it's Easter time, you're going to hear a lot of that. And you could say, well, that's just not, that's just a coincidence. And it could be just a coincidence. But uh, I've had the Lord uh, do some divine coincidences this week that have been pretty amazing. And, uh, and yet uh, one of them has to do with a dear friend. Michael Spleeth that is uh, uh, battling cancer and his liver is failing him and uh, you know it's very difficult for him but the Lord has saved his life through this whole ordeal several times and uh, we're praying for a big miracle for Michael and he sure loves the Lord so uh, the prayer so Jesus prays to God for his disciples. So he's praying for us. This is Jesus' prayer for us. Jesus spoke these words and lifted his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may also glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth and have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifest your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For you have given to uh, them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came forth from you they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All are mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep your name, those, uh, excuse me, keep through your name those 
whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. None of them is lost except for the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated me, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that they should be, that we, I do not pray you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but I also pray for those who will believe in me through their word. He's praying for you and I. He's praying for those who would believe in him through the word of the disciples. And that's the only reason that we believe is because of the word, the disciples that have been left to us through God's holy word. So, mm, I can smell it. Mm, let's see. Uh, I finally found my way back. So, at the last said, I do not pray for these alone, but for also for those who would believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, and me, and I in you, that they may be one in us, and that the world may believe that you have sent me. So he wants us to be one with them, us and the Father and us and the Son. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I and them, you and me, and they are made perfect in one. And that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you've given me may be with me where I am and that they may behold my glory which you have given me for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you but I have known you and these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name and will declare it that the love which you love me may be in them and I in them. And so that's Jesus' word for us. He wants us to be one with each other. He doesn't want uh, endless conflicts in the church. He wants us to be unified in him in the bonds of love. And many of the disputes uh, that we have in the church is because uh, we think we know too much. The Bible clearly says we teach in part, we prophesy in part. Everything that we do is in part. No man has been given complete knowledge. There are certain foundational truths that we should never waver on. But Jesus Christ is Lord, the Son of God. If that's the, the foundation of our truths, we should, be, we should be walking in that foundation. That he wants us to be one, even as him and the Father are one. And God will reveal to us the, the 
the disputable, that day that we're gathered to him. Uh, Chuck Missler, he used to say, well, if uh, you don't believe in the pre-tribulational rapture, he says, uh, that's all right. I'll explain it to you on the way up. <laughs> in other words, whether you believe in it or not, uh, you're still going to get raptured when it's the time. Uh, if you're walking right with Jesus, Jesus doesn't expect us to have every uh, Bible mystery solved. There were mysteries before Jesus came, and there's mysteries still to be solved in Bible prophecy. And uh, a lot of confusion about what is going to happen, but there are certain things we know is going to happen. The timing we want is going to happen when the church is removed and taken to heaven. Those are mysteries still. Some people think they have it totally figured out, uh, but I think most people don't really have it all figured out. And uh, it's amazing that, uh, uh, that I'll, I've heard for years, nothing else has to happen before the Lord comes. And then something else happens, and they'll say, now that that's happened, nothing else has to happen. Well, that's what you said before. But there are certain things the Lord said would happen. And one of them in Second Thessalonians chapter 2 is that the son of perdition or the Antichrist would be revealed first before the gathering together uh, to the Lord. Uh, he said that when he said uh, to them uh, regarding our gathering together with him, the rapture of the church, uh, that that would not by any means happen until the Antichrist was revealed first. And so once he's revealed, he's going to come after uh, the Jewish people, then come after the church, and uh, Jesus is going to step in and snatch his church up those that legitimately have faith in him and are walking with him will be saved out of this terrible tribulation, which we're already in some tribulations. And the tribulations are only going to get worse, even as a woman is in labor, the Bible says. And the intensity of them and the shaking of them is going to grow and grow. And uh, so we need more than ever, and I, I believe it's my ministry, is to uh, teach people how that we can walk strong in the Lord even through terribly troubling times. And, uh, and I know that's my call. I know that the Lord has uh, put all kinds of signs around me knowing that my ministry is, is truly an end times ministry and that... Uh, and that, that's the, the focus. I mean, he has allowed calamity after calamity to fall, to fall around me very close by. For instance, the, uh, uh, the shooting in Colorado, which I haven't seen any news on, but I've heard uh, about it this week, that uh, my wife's co-worker in Georgia her father was in that store and was in the bathroom when the shooting started and was able to make it out the emergency escape. So that's my wife's uh, relationship to that event. And mine was that my boss, his uh, cousin's friend, was the police officer that was shot to death in that store. And uh, even as the Bible says, one would be taken and one would be spared. And uh, as we come, and, and that's a different story, but it fits that, that there'll be some that will be taken through these calamities and some that will be spared through the calamities. And, uh, and it's amazing that I've, I've been around so many calamities and that uh, it is just amazing that uh, we have uh, seen so much, my wife and I, that God has done it in such a personal way that we can't help 
but to be uh, shaken by it and take notice of it, even as the day that uh, I got to Washington, D.C. on my prayer walk, Hurricane Katrina hit the Gulf Coast after 33 days of prayer walking for the nation that uh, that seven days of fasting began with the worst natural disaster that the nation ever seen. And I spent the seven days praying uh, in Washington, D.C. Saw two justices change that week. And as I returned uh, to Washington to pray in September, which was really where the Lord had convinced me to, to say out loud, I should be in Washington. Then on Monday, after that Saturday, I got an invitation uh, to apply for the job in Washington, got hired in Washington, came to Washington. And uh, now how I will minister here uh, is yet to be seen and yet to be fulfilled. But by faith I came, the door, the door swang wide open and I know that the Lord's going to use me here uh, to bring hope even here in the nation's capital to some of the highest leaders in the land. And so um, I've got an email today that the church is opening up for the first time on Easter Sunday. And so I'll be back in to my brand new church for the first time and uh, praising God in person instead of virtually. And uh, I hope that you can get into a church on Easter Sunday and not do it virtually also. Hey, I praise God for you. Be a blessing to someone this weekend. And praise God because he sent his son Jesus. And bless somebody in Jesus' name. Amen.